everybody. We're here with a friend of mine, an old old timer. Uh, old timer. That has been. <laughs> what? <laughs> take two. Like. Take two. Take two. <laughs> He's been playing, working in New York, Puerto Rico, LA, Europe, you name it, everywhere. And it's a pleasure and an honor to have here Eddie Resto, who played with Ray Barreto, Mongo Santa Maria, who else? Bunch, bunch of people. The list is too long. A lot of people. Actually. Yeah. Andy Sosa. Uh, I was born in New York City, so by the time I was 15, I was playing professionally, so that was 1970. And so by the time I was 17, um, I was with Machito, Mario Balza. I had Canales, and then by the time I was 19, I joined the Eddie Palmieri Orchestra, mm -hmm. who had just won the first Grammy for a Latin record that was ever given to a Latin record. In other words, he opened up a category for Latin music in 1975 for the record called The Sun of Latin Music. You have to get that record. And then that's when I joined the band. I didn't stop traveling for five years. So. Yeah. That's just to be... The Eddie, and you also finished the master's degree here? Yeah, yeah I, I, when I moved out here, I became a, a student. Uh, I was a single father, and so I thought a good way to raise my daughter was to go to school while she went to school. So I started at Los Angeles Community College right up the street. It became a lifestyle for my daughter and me. Then I went and got the bachelor's degree at Cal State LA. Then I continued on, got the master's degree in Cal State LA. Yeah, which is, it was an inspiration for me also to finish my, my bachelor's degree, which we, we both uh, started later in You know, life. once you start, you find it to become uh, a lifestyle, but it's very difficult as you're an older person and you got a daughter, you're single for a single father, and then you're working. So it was, it was challenging, but my daughter now realized uh, when you believe in yourself and when you have a dream that anything is possible. It was doable. It was hard, but... Do. Not easy, definitely not easy. All great things are not easy. If it was easy, everybody would be, would be doing it. Exactly, which is what happening right now. Everybody's doing it now. Not no. really. So, no. Not everybody's not. <laughs> no, people taking shortcuts. They're looking at YouTubes. Hey, Eddie, uh, I noticed that you play a lot of basses. You play electric bass, you play acoustic. Uh, but you are uh, an advocate of an uh, example of making a career recording and uh, to me it seems like you like a lot the baby bass, the antique baby bass. You, you made a lot of recordings and uh, why why do you think you gravitate even though you can play other basses but well I guess it's the percussive quality you know Latin music just like any other kind of music has a percussive texture and a quality uh, Latin music is drum mostly drum bass. You got bongos, timbales, you got congas, mm -hmm. um, and guido and cowbells, and a lot of density in percussive. Um, the baby bass was developed back in 65. This is one of them. This is 1967. I have four of them. So that you can remove yourself from the acoustic bass, which is classical and jazz, and very difficult to amplify because it would feedback in those days. Mm -hmm. And they gave a solid body and peg baby bass so that you can uh, articulate with the rhythm section. In other words, this is a bass, but I, it, it really is a drum. I play it and I approach it as a drum because I really am a drummer, a frustrated drummer that plays the bass. A drum with, with ditches. Yes, I, this is a Dramatic. drum. And then, in fact, this is a drum. The piano is a drum. Uh, all the instruments in the Latin music uh, band, a flute is a percussion instrument, a trumpet, a violin. It's all percussion patterns and approach. Piano, that's a drum. So you're looking at 10 people that are up on stage. Hopefully, they're all good drummers so that you get the feeling of a Latin rhythm in the Latin band. Now, we're going to reveal a little secret here. I hope you don't mind. I don't mind. The, usually, the baby bass has a pickup that is underneath, and it has like a plate that vibrates, and it's usually very muffled sound. But Eddie has a different system. He has a, a piezo, piezo, piezo? A, a piezo pickup, yes. 
Uh, and it's a wood wooden bridge. I've always used wooden to. bridges since 1977 when Victor Venegas made my first one. Because what I like about the wooden bridge is that you're going to get a little bit more sustain removing yourself from that dense, dull sound, that staccato sound. Yeah, because the, the, the original baby bass had a, a lot of uh, punch and, and almost boomy, what we call boomy. It's a, it's a conga. But it's, it's, there's no highs, and if you put the highs, then they don't work. That's, that's, well, you, you, you can figure it out, you know, that's a way of doing it. You know, the baby bass back in 65, when my grandfather played it, it played, came mm. with a flip top Ampeg bass amp, 80, 80, 80 watts. Yeah. So you combine the two together, tube amp, with the baby bass, and you had a delicious, a delicious sound. And I used to project, I remember when La Sonora Ponceña was rehearsing, and they, they used to be like uh, blocks away, but I could hear that bass in my house. Well, they live in Valdorio, in Ponce, and live in San Antonio, yeah. which is like across right. the high school and everything. Well, right. I could still hear the, the bass projecting from that end right. and, and the baby. Well, I'm, I'm thinking you, you don't want to use the word here, you feel it. That's the thing about the bass, you feel the note. Exactly. It goes in your heart, it, 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 it goes through your hairs. And if it's done proper, then you feel it. Hearing is another story. Um, the quality of the baby bass is percussive, as I re I'm repeating myself, but I kind of, because I'm an acoustic player and I play with a bow, I wanted to remove myself from that because I did a lot of studio work. So I followed the example of Andy Gonzalez, Bobby Rodriguez, Cachao, Sal Cuevas, to name a few, who were in the studios at the time, and they were trying to get away from the the, the dense sound to have more color, a little bit more sustain, and flexibility in the studio. Now, the baby bass was not made for metal strings. It was made for gut strings. In fact, acoustic basses in those days used gut strings. The jazz players used gut strings. Mm -hmm. The classical players, it was all gut. So that was another sound and another approach. Which by God, for those people that don't know, it's, it's a, like a leather string. It's not like you take a cat and take the butt out. Well, it's an intestine that's wound. Yeah, it's like it's, a leather. You, you know. take the intestine and you wind it up and you make a string out of it. So it's cat intestine. Or it's, it's really intestine. It's intestine that was wound tightly and that was it. Cat gut. <laughs> Violins use it. Cellos yeah, use it. Kind of girls. <laughs> well, it's, it's the reality. I mean, I mean you, you did what you did to make music, you know? Sometimes you hit rocks together, sometimes you take a cat, you make a string out of their gut when they die, you know? <laughs> but um, it was a beautiful sound because gut strings have a beautiful tone, beautiful organic sound. It, it's something that people try to recreate now digitally and they can never match it. So for me, the aesthetic of the bass, the wood, the, 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 the organicness of the wood with a leather string is delicious. But the animal rights people got involved and they kind of said we can't do that to the animals. So I did something a little different to get the sound that I get. So now you have from actually from La Bella strings, which is, is an endorsee of La Bella. And I, I used to be, not anymore, they haven't sent anything to me. Even if you're watching, please <laughs> include me. And uh, now we have, uh, what are these? Uh, well, La Bella and I, um, my grandfather played La Bella. That's a 200-year-old company. Uh, they've been making strings for over 150 years. Italian, old school. Um, I developed a relationship with them at the NAM show. My grandfather played La Bella strings, gut strings. And if grandpa played them, I'm gonna play them. I have my grandfather's baby bass. This is not it, but I have it. I've been playing it, it's taken me a little bit more. Um, so, I talked to them, I said, look, I can't get gut strings, it's not right to do that to animals, let's see what you can do. So they came up with this, which is a nylon wrapped rope core to get the sound that I like that emulates a gut string. It also has more sustain because I have a wooden bridge. I'm going to put a wooden bridge on there to remove the, that dull sound that I kind of went past that already. We'll do a close up on, on the bass. So, uh, and then I have a piezo. And I don't use the volume buttons on the bass. I just go straight from the instrument into the amp, and then I use the tones there. Sometimes I use a, you know, an effects, uh, uh, you know, some kind of mixer to 
add color. But the real sound comes from your hands, your fingers, and your heart. You can have all the electronics in the world. If you don't have this and that, and the, 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 the desire to get the sound out, that's key. It's all in the fingers. It's like in the fingers and in the heart. Say. I remember there was a gonga player saying, I just can't get the sound out of this gonga. And somebody said to you have to hit it. <laughs> hit it. And so you pretty much have to hit the bass too. 